You know, it's interesting. I did some research one time for a presentation I had to do, and this sticks with me to this day. When you look back at the, at the end of your life, they, there were some researchers that interviewed a bunch of elderly people in retirement home, and they said, what is your regret in life? And most people's regret was uh, that they didn't try to do something. It wasn't that they tried something and failed. It was that they didn't try at all. Hey everyone, today we have Ron and Janine. We met these two awesome people during our time in Alaska. They recently purchased land near Tucson, Arizona and invited G and I to go visit and check out the remote RV home. They have water, electric, and sewage here. In this podcast, we discuss mobile incomes, remote property purchases, and lessons learned from their RV journeys. Enjoy. All right, I'm Ron Niebrugge. I'm Janine Niebrugge. Uh, been a long time uh, professional photographer. I take the pictures. Janine does a lot of the marketing and website and all the other kind of stuff. So we've been a, a pretty good team for, for Over 15, 15 years. years. And now you're out here in the Arizona desert <laughs> and yeah. in, your, uh, in your fifth wheel. So you actually found the mobile income first and then the RV life kind of came to you, correct? Like you were already working, already had that mobile income, and then you moved into the, the RV. So how, how has it been having a, a mobile income? Was it hard for you to develop that or was that something that you had to work on for years and years before you achieved that? For us, we kind of lucked out into it. As a photographer, I did a lot of stuff in Alaska, and it's funny. I did a trip with a couple of my buddies. We went to San Antonio and went to a college basketball NCAA tournament, and we added a week to that trip, and Janine flew down, and I traveled around Texas a little bit, photographed San Antonio, photographed the hill country, and those photos sold like mad, like way better than all our Alaska pictures combined. And we're like, you know, Alaska's a small market. Two million people a year visit it, half a million people a year stay there, uh, you know, live there. Uh, and every photographer in the world goes to Alaska and photographs it, where we realized if we traveled to, like, say, Las Vegas, where 39 million people a year visit it, and hardly anyone photographs it, at least seriously, that there was maybe a golden opportunity for us to get out of Alaska in the wintertime, during the long nine months where it's, we're kind of unproductive, and, and photographs. So, uh, so we kind of backed into it. We're like, hey, we need to get an RV. We need to be able to travel around, kind of be cheap, be in, be in Moab, be in Zion, be in these beautiful places, be in the cities. And so we kind of backed our way into it, but it, was a, it ended up being such a wonderful, wonderful thing because we love it. Yeah. Yeah. And you st- did you start out with this, because uh, you had an RV before this. You had a, we had a little camper. A little a camper. camper on a truck, and we would drive it down from Alaska spend a couple months outside and then park it at my dad's house in California and then we'd fly back home and we'd back and forth like that um, for a long time but it's really it was a very small camper it was very hard to live live in and do business and so eventually we had a, a job come along that allowed us to um, have some uh, extra cash and we decided to roll it into the RV and truck um, so now we could, you know, we start out. We would come out two months at a time. We come out in the fall and in the spring, both months, uh, times a year that aren't great in Alaska. So we could easily travel down here. We can live in the RV very comfortably, and we did that for ten years now. The little camper was nice because it offered mobility. Yeah. We had, the, we had it in the back of a four-wheel drive pickup, so I could drive down a back road in, in Death Valley, for example, and stop, and there I was. But boy, it was hard to keep up with business. That was always a challenge. Back in those days, we were always finding internet cafes, and, and I mean, we lived in, I mean, every twice a day, we'd have to find an internet cafe and check email, and so it was a different world. It's interesting, when we were shopping for this, and uh, we were looking for roughly a 30-footer. We didn't want to go too big because we wanted to be able to get into national park campgrounds and that type of thing. And, uh, and the salespeople were always say, you know what, 30-foot, if you're almost full-time, I mean, if you're looking at four, five, six months a year, you're practically full-time. 30, 30 foot's too small for that. And we would point, see that little six-foot camper in the back of that pickup? <laughs> That's what we're using right now. I think we'll be fine on a 30-footer. <laughs> so how did you find this? And this is the hitchhiker... Uh, two and mm-hmm. what's its total length and what made you decide on this fifth wheel like why why this model and why a fifth wheel 
You know, it's interesting that the model is a 29.5, but I think it's like 30 and a half. It's, it's, RVs are the one world where they kind of de-exaggerate the length. Right. <laughs> I don't know, don't yeah. know exactly why. You know, we were shopping around. I spent a lot of time on the internet, as, as you do, Chris, and read and read and read. And then we flew down to the Pomona RV show, where there was every manufacturer in, in the world there. New Way is a company that was building these at the time. That's the parent company. We were looking at, uh, uh, what was the one with the double funny front end? Uh, Titanium Titan or something like that? Yes. Something, something, I don't know. You know, but it was yeah. interesting. We could see them all in one place. You mm -hmm. could, you know, it's one thing. They talked about their quality. It's another thing to actually, you know, in the brochures or on the website, it's another thing to actually open cabinets and doors and feel the walls and all that kind of stuff. So for me, the RV show was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And there was a representative from the, cor from the company at that RV show that, that knew these things inside and out, could answer all my questions, which were maybe more involved than the average consumer. Uh, and this model had a little slide out on the back that, that has an office in it, which was huge for us because Janine wanted to keep up with business. And so that was what sold us the office, the support, and the, and the interaction with the, with the corporation, and the, and the perceived quality of the unit. They were very well made, and you could feel that in pulling out the drawers and this and that. They weren't flimsy, and we wanted something that wasn't going to break down when we were living in it. You know, not just being weekend users, but actually using it day in and day out. So. And we knew we'd own it for a long time. We've yeah. had that for 10 years now, and we've really had very little problems. So we're grateful we spent a little extra mm -hmm. um, for, for, the, for what, yeah. what, I, what I think is a quality unit. Yeah. So did, did you think about a Class C, a Class A, or did it, was, was the fifth wheel always in your head as this is what we're going to get? Yeah. We talked about all of the options, but we wanted to be mobile when we got where we were going and not have to tow a car. You know, so this just made sense to us. Um, I kind of felt like we'd be towing either way. Yeah. If we had the motor home, we'd be towing a car. And, uh, you know, and th with the mobile home, motor home, we'd have two engines, we'd have two transmissions, we'd have double the things to maintain. Where I felt like this is fairly simple. And then we'd have a pickup truck. And you know, 10, 15 years down the road, I could replace the pickup truck and maybe still use this and, and then still have a new engine and transmission. So I lean towards the fifth wheel from the get-go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So has this, you said it, it's held up pretty well. Has, has it held up over time? You think this will last you another 10 years? It's a good question. I, I don't so. know. I think I so. Mean, it's you might have to, like, you know, we had to replace the toilet. I mean, there might be things you have to replace, but... After 10 years, that didn't seem too, too unrealistic, but... There's things I wonder realize. about, like yeah. they talk about the roof being good for 10, 12, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Things like that we might have to deal have with to here as time goes do on. Do some maintenance, but um, hopefully. Yeah. If you could change anything about this, this fifth wheel, anything you could add, what, what would you add? Or is this exactly what, what, you're, what, what you're needing and what you want? Well, that's a great question. That is. I really like it as is. Yeah. I don't ever go... Gosh, I hate this thing about it. It's, it's very well thought out. We like that when we're traveling and all the slides are in, we can easily access the kitchen and the bathroom and we can even get up to the bed. So we don't necessarily have to unhook if we just want to do a quick overnight or we can stop, make sandwiches on the road or take a nap. It's yeah. when it's all contained and then when it's open, you know, they just have cool things like this end flap that comes up and gives you a little extra counter space, but it folds down when you're not using it. and. Um, yeah, that's great. I, it's, I can't it's really, think of anything can't, yeah. that I've always wished it had that it yeah. didn't. Now, I haven't shopped in 10 years, yeah. so I'm sure there's a lot of new features. You know, I'm sure it's a whole different ball game, mm -hmm. uh, like, like everything. And it'd be interesting to see what they're doing now, but, but it served our needs. Yeah. I don't ever find myself going, I wish it had this. So how many months out of the year, because you go back and forth from Alaska to here, how many months of the year are you living in this and how many are you not living in it so how, how many months a year are you living in this i would say the minimum was four months a year this year for example and not to get ahead of ourselves but we purchased this remote property we're going to be here a good six months i would say if not more so i would say four to six months i remember our first i think at the three-year mark when we first bought this we had spent a full year in the rv in the three-year mark um I was like, wow, we've already put a full year in. So four to four to six months, I would say, is what we put. So right now we're out at a remote pop property you guys bought. It has sewer, uh, electric, you have water, you have the full hookup out here in this beautiful remote location. Um, 
if somebody was looking into doing the full-time RV life, what advice would you give them about finding a remote location or things they should know about doing a remote location? Like you mentioned earlier, like you, you don't often see too many people. Like there's pros and cons. You have the no, no light pollution, so you get amazing stars. But at the same time, when you have to get something into town, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, what, is, what are some things people should know about you know, getting remote properties and the pros and cons of it? You know, it's interesting, and uh, just to backtrack slightly, as a photographer, I've been doing workshops and tours, teaching teaching type things, um, and a lot of times they're at national parks, and there's a lot of restrictions, insurance, and you can't have feeders, like you probably hear the birds in the background. You, there's a lot of things that make it hard to do that kind of thing in a national park. So I started looking for my own, quote, national park. We kind of refer to it as Nibragi National Park. So I've been looking for a number of years for a beautiful piece of property like this, and uh, for us, the, you know, we were worried about being, so we're 35 minutes from Tucson from here, uh, 35 minutes from Costco and Home Depot and, and the grocery store. So it's a little bit of a disadvantage, as, as Chris and Gina know, because we, we spend the summers in sewer together. Um, and where we live, Safeway is, is a half mile or a mile away, which is very convenient. However, if we want to go to Costco or Home Depot, it's two and a half hours away. So in some ways, this has been more convenient for us because Costco's 35, 40 minutes away. We weren't sure how we would like it out here because we're seven, eight miles from the nearest full-time <laughs> residence. And so it was a little eerie at first. Yeah. We were a little nervous at some of the sounds and some of the, the, the eyeballs glowing off in the distance with their flashlight. Uh, but now, the, now I feel very comfortable, I love it. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't want it any other way. I'm just yeah. so peaceful, the wildlife we're seeing, that kind of stuff is just awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Things to look for, you well, know. Other things that are a disadvantage yeah. we found is because we are 35, 40 minutes to anything, when you're doing a project, it's, you don't want to forget something or, or you find out you need something, it's a long drive to the hardware store, you know, runs, we've had little fix it things. That's the other thing, you have to really learn to do things yourself because it's hard to hire someone that wants to drive out nine miles down a dirt road to do a little job. So we're having to learn a lot of things that we used to would just find the nearest RV repair person or our water lines, you know, whatever it is that we've had to work on, we've kind of had to figure that out. So that's kind of been a challenge because we're not necessarily fix it people by nature. Um, a little missing PEX <laughs> connector as I'm doing a water line yeah. is now an hour drive yeah. round trip and it's like I got to do it because we, we got to have water, water so, so that can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, I I'm, end up accumulating a lot of little extra stuff every time that happens it's like okay I need an extra yeah. one of those for next time. Yeah. So um, you're just saying how you know like you're not really fix it people but when it comes down to it when things need to be fixed out here you become fix it people yeah like you're, you're you're getting that confidence now right yeah. and it's kind yeah. of empowering it you know is. It is <laughs> it's like you know i was telling chris yeah. earlier it's like the toilet broke before and i just called somebody and now it's right. like gosh now it breaks and now i've gotten very comfortable pulling that off and putting it back in <laughs> i just put a new one in i'm like and so that part's empowering yeah. having an rv is pretty empowering for many different reasons but one of them is True. realizing that you can fix things yourself and you know, you just have to have the confidence and you'll, you'll get it sorted out. That's a good observation. It's empowering because you're just kind of self-contained. I feel like a little turtle. You got your yeah. house and everything <laughs> right there. You're, you know, it's like no matter what happens, I got my little home. You know, it's just kind of a neat little feeling. As a, oh, yeah. as a full-time RVer, you understand. But oh, it's a, I, I, it's a cool there's, feeling. There's no other feeling like it. And it's, it's hard. You really can't explain it until somebody lives it. Like, yeah. They, yeah. I think people have an idea that's like, oh, that'd be so cool but they don't really realize it until they actually are there okay. until they wake up in the morning with a cup of coffee and like mm -hmm. like with you in the back with with your bird feeders to be able to sit and relax and you know be be present in every day so someone that is on the fence about doing this lifestyle somebody that sees what you're doing here and they're in their head like oh that looks so cool I'd love to do it mm -hmm. but they they just need that little bit of motivation that little bit of push mm -hmm. to to get them over the the hill what advice would you give them or what perspective have you found that that you think people should know about this lifestyle it's interesting because i and i follow a number of photographers and it seems like in recent years i've seen a number of photographers quit their jobs and maybe they have another skill like programmer or something and, and kind of break off and do this full-time thing as well and watching what they do i guess 
my first thing would be to just do a bunch of RVing first and just make sure that, because it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's certainly, some people would rather have the, the pool and the resort and that kind of thing. So I guess I would want to make sure that it's, it's for you. You know, even if you have to rent an RV for a week or two and just do a little ex bit of an extended trip, even if you just went to the Grand Canyon or just went to a one spot, didn't even do a bunch of traveling, I probably would recommend people to do that first. Oh, yeah. I think you'll learn real quick whether it's you or not. Mm -hmm. um, boy, then I would just say, just do it. Do it. It's, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I did some research one time for a presentation I had to do, and this sticks with me to this day. When you look back at the, at the end of your life, there were some researchers that interviewed a bunch of elderly people in retirement home, and they said, what is your regret in life? And most people's regret was uh, that they didn't try to do something. It wasn't that they tried something and failed, it was that they didn't try at all. And it's like, wow, that's empowering. It's like, in other words, you're better off trying something like that, hating it, selling it, and going on to the next thing, than getting old and wondering, gosh, I never did do that full-time RV thing. I never did pursue that. I wished I had. I wonder what would happen. Yeah. I mean, you're better off trying it and, and, and then saying, well, I'd rather have a house selling it and redoing it than, yeah. than not trying at all. That, yeah. That would be one big part of advice. What do you have to lose for the most right. part? Right, I'm, I'm a big believer in the in the idea that the fear of something going wrong is typically much worse than the actual, the actual thing going right. wrong. So true. Oh yeah. So true. What's the worst yeah. that's going to happen? You know, maybe hold on to your house if you got a great low location at yeah. first, just as a backup. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot of people just diving in with both yeah. feet, and it's probably a better strategy. Mm -hmm. Sell the house and dive in with both feet, because then you you, you can't go back. Good. You know, yeah. <laughs> when you have that bad yeah. day and. You know, you're broken down on the side of the road or something yeah. and it's cold and you're hungry and, you know, it's like you can't just throw in the towel and go back to your house. It's, mm -hmm. You work through it and then you're more empowered and, you you know, it's it, it almost adds to the experience when you overcome yeah. an obstacle like that. Yeah. All right, one, one last question here. Yeah. It's kind of a two-parter. What's been the most difficult day living out here in this RV and what's been the most enjoyable, the most, you know, surreal day that you've had living in this RV out here? here on this property? Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, we've had some amazing, there's a lot of days, the best day, it's hard to single one out because we've had so many special days, even even this morning or last night, we had two gray fox come down, check out the bird feeders. We had a, a Dakota Monday show up in the game cam, you know, and it's like, I never know at any moment a cardinal could fly by or a rare animal could walk by. So it's just, there's so many great days yeah. that I couldn't pick any one out, but there's so many beautiful mornings or beautiful sunsets sitting here, you know, having a gin and tonic in the evening and watching the sunset, watching the sunset. and watching the birds. I mean, that's just, you, just quiet. Epic. It's relaxing. It's peaceful. It's it's awesome. The know? bad days are when we've had we were. It's usually a mechanical issue. We had uh, there was a big storm that came through at Christmas time, and we were gone, and we got back, and the power wasn't working. Or that was bad. Or when the sewer's yeah. not working, it's kind of like... Because you don't have a generator out here. We have a little we generator. Have a generator but it's not hooked up. And but it was our, our 110 wasn't working, our 120. Yeah. So the generator wouldn't have helped either. Just a few 12 volts, and it's like, oh, and it was cold. And it was so that, Christmas weekend, and it's like, oh, gosh. And the other time when the toilet first broke, and that was the day before Thanksgiving weekend, four days, and you're like... What now? You know, there's nobody <laughs> open, and it's like oh, we don't we have, have to... a restroom to run to. You know, it's we'd like, be running a Motel Six a or something yeah. and getting a hotel room. They've all worked out, and we've had some great all, people at our at RV repair centers that have given us advice and yeah. try this, try that, and but but there's a few hours there that could be pretty, pretty stressful, yeah. as you will know. Probably coming home after a long day of driving and wanting to jump in that shower and get in here and find out we had no electricity was pretty, and we didn't know why, so it wasn't, we weren't even sure how to go about fixing it. So what, what happened, how'd you fix it? Well, you know what, I ended up unplugging and plugging back in, trying to 30 amp, and I think there was a, an automatic reset bus electric bus. There wasn't a, a button on it. It's an autom automatic reset. And I think plug in and unplug in finally kicked that automatic reset because then, yeah. it, then it, it I, I put the 50 amp back, back in and it's like Janine's like, oh, we got power. Thanks. Yeah. But you you yeah. fixed it. And I'm like, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Except the very next day I called you and ordered a progressive in industries. Uh, <laughs> just just in case. Little plug. Yep, yeah, it's on there right now. So, uh, Clearly something happened while we I'm like, Chris, I think I need one of those search protectors. <laughs> Thought about it for a long time. Yeah. And now I have it. Awesome. Th thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Oh, yeah. It was fun.